All right, hi, uh, this is Jameson Burrell, and I'm making this uh, orientation video, which you'll probably need to go back to and revisit a few times to make sure you've got everything that I said. I might even make a quiz on it to make sure that you've got everything that I've said. Um, most of what I said is also in writing already, but I wanted to make this quickly, and if the volume's too loud, um, just go ahead and pause it, turn the volume down a little bit. Um, if the screen is not all the way enlarged, look for a way to full size the screen, because there is a way. Uh, I'm using a larger size screen. I'm going all the way to 1024 by 768. If that doesn't mean anything to you, then don't worry about it. But um, I, I hope that you're viewing it on a computer that can see the larger size screen because I, I wanted to fit a lot on. Uh, if you're not, and if you have any trouble with this video or have any other questions about it, just email me and I can either modify it or say stuff again or recreate a whole entire video. Okay. Um, so I have two sections, thanks to the high demand. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want one section. I didn't even want to teach this summer, but <clears throat> I, I, will, I will do my best to help you learn and be successful in statistics. That's the course, elementary statistics, that we're teaching here. Uh, I said I would teach it if I could teach it online because uh, we're going to be doing a few things with my family this summer that we're going to make it hard to be a, um, on campus Monday through Thursday, which I normally teach it. Uh, they gave me one section, and you guys kept asking for more. Um, and uh, sorry, this one's not mine. That one's the face-to-face. -face. Um, and by the way, I should make a quick comment about this. The face-to-face -face class starts a week after ours. So if there's any reason for you to um, drop out of ours, and I mean a legitimate reason. I don't mean just because you're scared. Uh, I'd say give it a chance rather than just, you know, turn tail and run. But um, if there's a good reason why you're going to be dropping out, and you want to still try statistics, there will be a face-to-face -face one from 8 to 9.50 a.m. Uh, on campus, the, the Lamore campus, and I used to teach that. It's, it should be good. I just don't know anything about this teacher, but I, um, I encourage you to think about that if this class online isn't going to work out for you. Um, I don't want you to get a late start, so you need to know your dates. We start from 6-3, June 3rd to uh, August 2nd. Um, I have two sections. You'll see the material in different locations, and sometimes it'll have one section number on it and another section number. If you ever have a question, just double check with me. You should know which section you're in because it'll be uh, marked by L02, Lemoore 02, or L03, depending on the section that you're enrolled in. So uh, I guess I should say thanks for the demand because now I have two online classes <laughs> instead of the one. Um, I, I think we'll have a good time, and I'm glad that we're here. So the bookstore does have our book labeled. Um, I'm going to go and pick our section here as the 11th edition. So I'm just going to take a moment here to load. You don't even need the best internet connection for this. I'm using a, a, a county internet called Kingsnet. It works just fine. Just while I do this video, sometimes it's going to take a while to load. So uh, it has the 11th edition. And I sent out an email telling people that 11th edition is fine. That's what they've been using. We're going into the 12th edition. Sean Jackson, another math instructor here on campus, has already moved to the 12th edition. Well, Frida Ganter hasn't. Um, I'm kind of a blend between those two instructors. At least that's from, what, from my understanding of other students. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move into the 12th edition because if for any reason you fail the course or you don't complete it and you've bought the course material, 12th edition is what everyone should be going to next semester. So even though I'm saying you can use the 11th edition, it would make more sense to go to the 12th edition. But for the physical copy of the book, it doesn't really matter. And you'll see why in just a second. Let me just verify with you and myself. I'm going to go ahead and pick fall next semester. Um, and I'll see if they've got that 12th edition listed yet. So for Math 25, Statistics, I'll just pick the first section that comes up. And where they have... Yeah, so they've got the 12th edition. That's why we're going to be using 12th edition of the My Math Lab material. But I, I, don't, um, I don't care what edition you guys use for the book. In fact, you could go all the way back to the 8th edition, and it's pretty much the same. The reason why I don't care what physical edition of the book you, you use is because I want you to be able to buy a physical book. And you can get them out there for $5 sometimes if you get the 8th edition and you, you know, buy it at the right site. 
you can ask each other and I'll, I'll I guess I can make a space available in the discussion room for you guys to ask each other you know where you're getting them there's other sites like Chegg um, obviously Amazon and half.com and things like that I haven't kept up with the latest and the greatest so you guys might be able to help each other out but more than I can um, so I've got two sections here like I said um, this material is all using the, the 12th edition so if you're gonna need help uh, aligning your edition to my edition just ask um, when you're reading in fact I'll show you quickly if I can here when you're reading I'm showing you just the alignment between the 11th edition and 12th edition most of it's gonna be the same except for you're gonna have some things like um, sections 1 2 and 1 4 are combined in the 12th edition just to one section uh, 2 4 and 2 5 are combined into just a single section and then um, they do it again for 8 4 8 5 they do it again and they switch a few sections um, they bring up here that sections 6 6 and 6 7 are switched in the 12th edition and so are they didn't mention it here but so are sections uh, 4 6 and 4 7 so if you do use an older edition, no problem, ask me some questions if you're having trouble in the reading. Or um, don't worry so much about what book you get and don't even buy a physical copy of the book because you actually don't need it. Um, you'll have a copy of the electronic book, let me let that load, um, which will have all the editions uh, exactly aligned the way our homework aligns them and there's no worries. So if you want to read the electronic book, that is going to come with your purchase of the course material and it'll be the edition the 12th edition all right hopefully i'm not making that sound confusing because it's really not confusing let me see if i can show you uh, they have some great tools coming out now uh, in the apple store and the amazon market i don't know yet about the windows or any other smartphones out there but um, at least these two have an ability to download the book in pieces and read offline. So you can use your tablets and your phones, you should be able to, to read the book if you don't choose to buy a physical copy of the book. But I, like I said in the syllabus, I strongly recommend people buying the physical copy of the book, even if they find an older edition, because statistics is not one of the classes where you just, um, you know, you just kind of listen to the instructor or watch a few videos and do a few homework problems and pick it up. You need to read it do the homework problems to test what you understand, sometimes causing you to go back to the, to the reading and you know, learning it over again or reinforcing the idea and then doing a test and making sure that you've mastered it. Uh, on, the, on the play market, you'll find it under uh, My Pearson or My, My Lab and Mastering. And I think it's about the same in the Android mar or the um, Apple store. Um, I'm going to go through an example of logging in, but I'm also attaching a um, sheet that shows you how to do all this stuff. It's, it's really very clear. So um, I'm going to act like I'm signing in for the first time. If I have used Course Compass before or My Math Lab, I just hit that sign in that I just clicked on. And you can pause and rewind this video if there's anything that you don't remember me already clicking on. Otherwise, I'm going to click under Register and hit Student. This is what the handout says, but if you've already used Course Compass, you don't have to go into Register. You can sign in first. You'll need a course ID. Now the course ID is on the syllabus and the syllabus is different depending on what section you're in. If you're in section two, then you're gonna have a different number up here for your section. More importantly, you'll have a different ID down here where it says Burrell followed by five numbers. I'm not sure which section you know, I wanna go into. I'm just gonna pick one, but uh, I, I'm not playing favorites here. But I'll just use this Burrell 10825, and that's for section two. But if you're section three, you're going to use 91954. That's all in the syllabus that I already emailed out, and that's also in the handout that I've attached to this, this uh, email that I'm sending to you. So 10825. Okay, so then if you had forgotten to sign in and you clicked under register, it's going to ask you to sign in again. Please sign in because you do, you really don't want to create multiple Course Compass or multiple MyLab accounts. You kind of just want to use one and have all the books that you ever use with Pearson um, lined up right underneath. 
I'm going to go ahead and say create as if I've never done this before and make a few comments. Um, your email address, I would like you to use your school email address because that's the one that I'm going to always use as default through Advanced 360 or through um, my email tool with the school. But you can put in whatever email address you want here technically. And the nice thing about that is if your phone's already aligned to a certain email address and you want to do that, or your phone or tablet, then feel free to do that. Okay, so um, we'll just say student person. At, uh, now I'm going to act like I'm using a school email, so it's going to be my whccd.edu. Now it's really, really important is that you understand it's um, my and then a dot, and it's whccd. Mine doesn't have a my dot in front of it. It doesn't have this first part. And when you send your emails with the without the my, I can't reply back to them. And I'll try, and if it doesn't go to you, I'm not going to push the uh, put putting more effort into it. I'll let you try to recontact me. So make sure your email is correct, and um, don't argue with me on this. I have some students that disagree with me. They say that their email doesn't use a my; it uses a my. Okay, that's the student email. Okay, then um, you can use that as your ID or you can make it shorter, and this can be changed actually later. It's got to be something different, so let me just try student person number one. Use whatever password you want. Oh. Well, with some restrictions. Oh, I'm using special characters, I'm sorry. Okay, and then the comment. Uh, when you put in your name, make sure that you're reading this. This is first name first. I know that seems insulting maybe to some people, but I have too many students that don't follow the directions, so I have to be insulting. Uh, it's the first name first, followed by your last name, not the reverse order, and I know I understand why it probably happens. Um, make sure that you've capitalized the first letter, but not all the letters. Please don't make sure that you uh, don't use a nickname. You need to use exactly the name that you have registered with West Hills College, the exact name. So if you've, if you've gotten married and congratulations, your, and your name has changed, make sure that you're using the name that is with, that's registered with um, West Hills College. Because I need these to line up when I try to do the grade book and I only have two days to finish this class when, you know, before the next semester starts. Okay, your security question can be whatever you want. I guess I better choose something. Um, where is my number? Uh, 1901. Um, and accept the licensing agreement. If you want to use the, uh, the, the checkbox here to receive any product information, go ahead. Um, I've used it to, uh, on all my accounts, and they, I've Maybe they've sent me out an email and I've forgotten, but I, I don't think they've ever sent me out, out an email. So they're obviously not trying to harass me or you. But if you don't want to use it, don't, don't use it. But you do have to accept the agreement and you can read through it. Okay, so you can see this process is almost as easy as, you know, signing up for an email account. That, that what was important on that previous page is that you use your um, school ID if you don't have a reliable other email um, and that you uh, use your name, first name first, last name last, capitalize the first letter, not all the letters, and then um, the, the rest of it, you know, simple. Um, when you have bought a standalone access, you can redeem it here. Uh, that's going to show you that in the access card that you have, there's an ID. It's not a CD, it's, it's an ID that you put the ID in and, and use it here. Or um, I hope you let me go back here. Or you can pay for it directly right now with a credit card or PayPal or a debit card. But more importantly, um, the, I know that there's no reason why people can't have the course material on time, which um, in the syllabus, if you haven't already read it, it says that you have to have the course material by the 7th, 
which is this Friday at midnight, or I can drop you from the class and uh, mark you down as a no-show. If, if you um, don't have money right now or you're waiting for it to come in, you have these seven, this 17 day access. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get your course material. So let me go ahead and click on that option, especially because I'm just demo demoing this example and I'm not actually gonna pay. So then I say, yes, this is what I want and I know that it's temporary access, I can learn more about it. It's not gonna make you pay. So if you forget to pay, um, you're gonna lose your course access and, your, and the work that you've done. But it will send, I think, uh, one or two email reminders if you put your email in right, which is another issue. That's, that's why I want to draw your attention to this again. Some people put their email in wrong because they don't use the my dot, and then they get sent the reminder to pay their material and pay for their material, and they don't. They don't ever um, receive it, and they don't pay for their material. Anyway, so uh, that is it. So then I can click on my course and go there and start doing homework. Now here's another reminder too. Put down, please, your passwords and all that stuff somewhere safe because we're going to need those when we take the midterm and the final exam. We're going to need both of them. So you can't just store them in your computer. We're going to need them to be accessible when we go and take the tests. Um, so I have them written down somewhere, maybe on your phone or, or a Dropbox account. Okay, um, let me show you just really fast what the site looks like. The color here may be different depending on what class you're in. The syllabus is the opening page. For some reason, on some browsers, this page doesn't open all the way. It only opens to the first half, just um, about at this line right here. So you'll see this funny, cheesy face of mine, um, and you'll have all this other contact information, but you don't see the actual syllabus showing. Click on the syllabus button again, and that'll, that'll get it to show up. Um, in fact, that's a good reminder for everything. Just hit refresh, close windows, and or restart computers. If you're having computer problems, follow the basic rules before trying to send me a bunch of emails. I'm, I'm really not trying to be here to manage your ability to use a computer. I'm sorry, but this is a statistics class. It's a transfer level class. I'm, I'm expecting a different breed of students for online learners, someone that already knows how to kind of use the online system. And if you don't, feel free to ask for help but don't harass me for it because my job is to teach you the statistics, not necessarily to orientate you through the, the entire uh, online experience. In fact, I would, I would suggest that you, you really take this class if you are sure that you're ready for an online class. Um, at, at some time in the semester, I'm going to go ahead and make this become the home page, and I'll turn that syllabus page off as the front page. It'll still be, the syllabus will still be here, but it'll just be off. Because this one will give you a timeline on, on top, week by week, of what assignments are due, what's been posted. It gives you another point of access right here. Um, in fact, so you know, there's some homework due and a chapter one, uh, chapter one quiz coming up on Thursday. Um, it also gives you quick links to make sure that you have all the right um, installation tools for your browser and so on. And it gives you a progress of your grade. Uh, underneath that is the tools for success. This one is so important. I'll show you how to use this more as we go, but you can just start exploring it for now. One of the pages in there is called the Triola Statistics Review, Review Card. This is one of the sheets that you'll, if you've printed it out, be able to use during the midterm and the final, and it is a huge, it's a, it, it's a pretty big file packed with um, all the stuff you're really going to need. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go off about that too much longer, but, but please, Start using this tools for success, explore around in there. That one that I was just looking at was one of the review cards. It was, um, well, there's this calculator review one, which is a nice one. There's the graphing calculator tutorial. And, um, and that's the one I was using. So th this is one of the ones you can um, use during the test. And I will remind you before the midterm of the ones that you can use. All right, uh, then assignments come next. And what I've done this semester is a little different than previous semesters, maybe different than any math, my math lab class you've used before. I've used the assignments button instead of the, de the default um, homework button. The homework button's down here uh, toward the bottom of the left, left panel. And the assignments button, they're, they're pretty much the same, but I put this one first because this one you can see all assignments as they're due. 
even a test if I if I was to assign a test although I'm, I'm keeping quizzes as my tests and tests as my midterm and final that way they'll be, they'll show up in separate categories in the gradebook but um, so you'll you'll be able to see homework and things uh, and quizzes and tests and new thing participations for example they'll all be showing at the same time and you can just uh, navigate your way through those sets Okay, um, quizzes and tests is another location for accessing the quizzes and tests. It's just another um, way in there. Study plan is, is a tool for you. I'm not going to force you to use a study plan, but uh, it, it allows you to do more studying. Uh, there, there is one that if you've never used Course Compass before, there's this assignment here that you really should try. In fact, I'll expand this here. It's called the Orientation Questions for Students. You should try the orientation problems. There's just um, in this section, wow, it looks like it says only one section, but there's got to be more problems. There's usually, yep, there it is. There's 12 problems. This will teach you how to, how to enter problems in here. So if you've never, ever used Course Compass, let me show you the, the uh, breadcrumbs for that. You log into the course, you click on study plan, and under the study plan contents, choose the chapter O, that's not zero, that's the chapter O for orientation. Do all those problems. I'm not assigning them because I don't want to waste your time. And if you used course comps before, it's like work that you don't really want to have to do. But anything that, I, that I'm saying now and you need help on later, just go ahead and ask. Um, and I think that's, I don't, I don't want to spend too much more time in here because I, I know you'll learn as you go. The chapter contents contains the book and all the book material. So you can, access like for example chapter one section one section one has reading but doesn't have any actual homework there's a video for each section you can watch these videos some I will require but right now there's nothing required for the videos so they're for you to watch in case the reading isn't good enough the videos are really going to be more required by the time we hit to chapter three the reading should be sufficient between now and chapter three so for chapters one and two and most of three actually you should be able to just go in read the e-text, the, the text I showed you before, or read the physical book and answer the questions in the homework. And by homework, what I mean by the, uh, in, on the panel here is the assignments, because that's replacing the old homework button. Another quick way to get to all that material that I just looked at was the multimedia library, or is the multimedia library. And you can choose chapter one, select everything that's available. I'm gonna, and these are the kinds of things that, I'm, that I would assign. I would, um, force you to go through an animated flow chart here or a statistics study in which case if you read the book and you're not totally getting it you could come here anyway but um, if I force you to go there then I, I know that you've at least seen something like that um, anyway I'm trying to keep this summer pretty simple so the syllabus doesn't have all the assignments on it because they're in the assignments page the syllabus has the uh, basic outline of the, of the uh, semester the important things that you uh, should have noticed by now that I that I put put on the syllabus is that we we do have a proctored exam on the 25th of June, and we have a proctored exam on the 1st of August. These two are really important, and let me show you where um, where the restrictions are for me. I have to give you for an online class. I have to give you one of the two. Either all chapter tests must be proctored, and I'm sure that you're taking online for this during the summer because you don't want to have to come to campus every day. So I'm not going to take that option. Or the second option is that I have to um, proctor the midterm and the final, and you must receive an average score of 70% or above to be able to pass the class. So those tests, the midterm and the final, are really important. You can't flake off and say, well, I'll get ready the night before. You've got to constantly be preparing for that test. Um, come back here. Uh, the midterms on June 25th, it's going to be on campus at 9 a.m. Um, if that's the tentative time, if we have to change the room or the place, I'll let you know as soon as I have that information. And um, if you do need a proctor, I can start approving those proctors, but I'm not sending you know, all the information about the proctors until you until you ask uh, because it's it's a bigger process and I don't want to waste my time uh, trying to get one set up for you individually when you can really just come to campus and do it with the rest of the group 
So let me know if you're going to need a proctor setup and I'll get the official proctoring information. I'll dust off the file and, and we'll find a, an approved proctor for you. Some of the approved proctors are people that are like uh, the librarians at COS, the librarian at COS, or the librarian at State Center Community College, just to name a few local districts, um, or the librarian at the Kling campus. So there's, there's some approved proctors, and you need to get their permission. That's not their job to do it, but if you get their permission and I get their um, approval and we th uh, fill out the paperwork, then uh, you can do that, and then you won't be meeting with us, but you'll still be doing it the same day and relatively the same time. Okay, I can't think of anything else I really need to say right now. I have a Dropbox account posted where I've um, put your calendar of things in, uh, for which we need to cover in there. I've also put a copy of the syllabus in there, a generic copy. This one doesn't have a course ID. Uh, it doesn't have the section number because it's supposed to be generic for both of your classes. Um, the calendar, if, if it gets change it, changed online and we have to make some adjustments, then this calendar is going to become out of date because this, this is the pacing calendar for what I foresee is going to happen right now. And there could be more extra credit that's added. There will, very likely, there's going to be more extra credit, like a 90% chance that there's going to be more extra credit added. Um, currently, the only extra credit I have showing in here is that if you take the um, quiz for 6, 7, 8, and 9 early, you can get extra credit to those quizzes. And that's, that's because I don't want people to just follow the deadlines on the homework. If you're just following the deadlines on the homework, you're going to be behind the whole semester. You'll just be a little bit behind, but then when the final comes, you won't have this extra time to practice. So what I would really like is for you to um, be right on this calendar or um, pretty close to right next to it. For example, the first quiz here is um, supposed to be due on the sixth, meaning that we finished lecturing or, or you know, you've finished reading and doing the homework for chapter one. But I have that quiz due and I have that quiz open until the seventh because I know that not everyone's going to get to it that first in, that first day. So I'm, I'm allowing it to be done the second day, but it's not it's not allowed after that. So you got to get it done by then. Same thing like for the second quiz. We're going to be done with the content for the second quiz by the tenth, but you're not going to be able to, but you're, you're going to have to get the quiz done by the eleventh. So you can manage your time within one, two, three days for some cases, or you can get yourself ahead, and then if you're always like, like this pacing chart is written out, if you're always doing those things and finishing them the day that they say them, then your life's going to be a whole lot less stressful. You're going to have a little bit more time. Currently, I have um, the homework listed every day that's supposed to be done, meaning that it's read and learned and uh, homework attempted, but the actual homework deadlines aren't till Friday. So that's why you don't want to wait till the deadline because it, it's really not going to be easy for you to keep up with all of the homework, every section that's due that week on Friday. And then I even have a little bit more time. They're, they can be turned in up to as late as Sunday, but then there's a little bit of a penalty to your homework. and You don't really want penalties. Anyway, let me know if you have questions. Close this out. Oh, forget that. Um, I'm sending this email to you. It will have... It'll have the information that I've said, it'll have this video, it'll have the Dropbox, and good luck. Thanks.